One of the really neat things about EDIA 7 is its ability to be able to take multiple codecs, resolutions, frame rates, and whatnot, and be able to place them on the same timeline and play them in real time and allow you to be able to edit them. And that's what I'd like to show you uh, at this moment. If I come up here into my bin window, you'll see this little light gray area where my mouse is kind of circling. I just double click there and it comes up with a normal Windows browse window. So I'm going to come up here and, and take a look uh, at all my demo and you can see that I have a lot of different codecs here which doesn't even touch the amount of codecs that EDIUS actually uh, can use. HQX, which I'm going to go into right now, is the native format uh, for EDIUS. So if I come in and I grab one of these clips, you'll see it come up in the bin window. I can double click on it and send it over into the player window or I can just bring it right down the timeline and, and just be, be able to play it right there. Now, that's nothing amazing because it's a native format. However, let me trim that off. I'm going to double click again and I'm going to go this time into AVC HD. My AVC HD footage now, I just grab one of those I can bring it in, and instead of taking the player window, I can bring it right down on the timeline. And as you can see, I can play very smoothly directly from the HQX file into the AVC HD. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim that off just a little bit also, because I want you to see that it's not just playback, but I can also go into my transitions, bring down a transition between the two of them, and be able to play it without any problem whatsoever. Now, that's not the only thing that EDIUS can do, because it can take uh, flip phone, it can take all these different types of formats, especially AVCHD, and bring them in and play them. However, there's more codecs and more different file formats out there. Some of these are what I like to call multiple folder codecs, sort of like uh, the uh, Sony EX and XD Cam, and, and you have Panasonic P2 and these different type formats. So how would I bring those in and be able to place them on the exact same timeline and be able to use them. Well, you'll notice that I have my bin right here, but I also have a, a tab called the source browser. Now this source browser is kind of amazing, and the reason being is is because it basically takes any codec that has multiple folders inside of it or multiple files that have to be kind of joined together, and it, it does it for you in the background. So all you have to do is be able to take it and put it on the timeline. So, one of the amazing things of this I want to show you is, and I just happen to have a stick here with some Sony EX footage on it. Look at the XDCAM EX folder right here. When I plug that stick in, Windows is going to see that, that drive, and it's going to be taking a look and see if there's anything in there that it can use. If it discovers that there's a folder in there with certain amount of footage in it that has this type of codec or one of the codecs that it sees, it's going to basically automatically bring it up and place it underneath one of these folders right here. Notice how this kind of jumped for a second, and now under XDCAM I have a G drive. Inside of that G drive, there is my footage. Now, let me explain to you how this footage works. Right now, what you are seeing is what's sitting on the actual drive itself, external to the computer. It's not in my bin and not on my computer itself. So if I were to pull it out, that would disappear. And if I had done any editing on it, it would be gone. However, if I right click on it and I say add and transfer to bin, then what will happen is when I go to my bin window right here, you'll notice that it has a little H with the down arrow and see that percentage building? What's happening is, is I can use it right now. I can scrub through it. I can take a look at all of it because what it's doing is, is playing it off the external card. But when that reaches 100%, that means it's automatically going to take that footage that's on my timeline or in my player window, and it's going to quit playing it from the external source and start playing it automatically, seamlessly from the computer itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and do a little bit of a trim here so we don't have that much. Now notice it's hit 100% and it comes up and now this footage is sitting on my computer. If I go to this source browser and then disconnect, you'll see that that footage is going to go away here in just a moment. And see, that's what I had sitting in my player window. So now you're seeing that pattern saying that it's no longer available. However, look at my timeline. My timeline, it's there and usable because of the fact 
that I was transferred it over. And once again, now I have Sony EX footage on top of the yeah, ABC there HD isn't footage. Isn't the voice of all on the top of the HQX footage, and it's all playing on the timeline. Now, what if I don't get that to come up automatically? Well, I can just come in here and say, you know what? I need to come in and take a look here and see the different types that I have on my P2. I'm going to right click on it and say open folder because this stuff is already sitting on my computer. So I'm going to go to my computer, find my drive right there, find my media. And as you can see underneath all of this, I have my EDIUS media demo. And then I'm going to take a look through, let's say, AVC I-50. When I open up that one right there, you're going to see that I'm able to see the contents folder and everything that's in that contents folder. So I'm just going to select OK. And now you can see all of the footage that's sitting in there. This is its complete and total native format. There is no unwrapping and rewrapping, no transcoding going on here. And once again, what I want to do is, is I want to take a look at one of these clips. I'm going to double click it. It's going to come over and play in its native format there. However, I'm going to once again right click and say add and transfer to bin. I'm going to go over to my bin window and there it is sure enough being transferred. It was very, very quick. And then I'm going to double click on it to put it into my uh, viewer window there. And then I'm going to bring it down the timeline. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a trim here once again so we don't have to sit there and watch it over and over and over again. And I'm going to put a transition in between. And so now I have HQX playing in its native format, then AVC HD in its native format playing on the timeline. Now realize, when it gets to the timeline, nothing is happening. You're not seeing any clock swirling or anything of that nature because it's trying to conform yeah, it or anything of that isn't nature. The voice of all it's the military literally or all just the military playing families. And we this still have footage our in its sons native and daughters, and many, many families that have their boots on the ground in whatsoever. Iraq. And as you can see, all these different footages are playing together with transitions in between and able to work. Now, what does this mean to you? Uh, in the broadcast realm, I know when I've trained TV stations that it's a huge deal that when people run up with some kind of recording device, whether it be their phone or whatever it happens to be, and say, look, I've got something on here you want, and they can bring it in, add and copy to Ben, hand the phone back to those people, and now they have the footage that they need. At a wedding, a lot of times, if you're a wedding and event videographer, whether it be a big, huge event or a wedding or whatever it happens to be, you have different people that might be shooting for you, and they may not have all the same cameras. Instead of wasting a ton of time sitting there trying to transcode stuff to where it's usable for you, you're able to bring it in, put it on the timeline immediately, doesn't matter what the flavor of video it is, and be able to edit it. For same-day edits for an event or like a wedding or something of that nature, absolutely needed and absolutely imperative that you work as, as quickly as possible. To end, I would like to just give you a list of all of these different formats. So if I was going to print this to file, it'll show you the different formats that EDIUS can go out to as well as bring in. And you'll see, here's this wonderful list, right? Well, if I uh, go to all... And look at this dadgum list of, of stuff. These are presets up here in the top, and you can take a look and see the amazing list of presets that I have sitting here. But all I want to do is go down and show you the different engines that you're able to use. And you'll see that even if I take this on my screen here and, and pull it out for the full screen, I can't fit all the different formats that are available inside of EDIUS that you can edit and you can output to in real time here. And as you can see, there is just a huge, huge amount of different kinds. So EDIUS, untouched in its ability to be able to take in different formats, take in different codecs, and be able to play it in real time, use effects with it, and be able to edit very, very quickly. EDIUS, guys, is available at videoguys.com. The great folks at videoguys.com have a really good cross-grade going on right now. So if you go to videoguys.com, and inside the search, just type in... EDIUS 7 Crossgrade, you'll be able to find it very easily and look at all the information on it. Also, one of the other cool things that Video Guys does for you 
Let's say that you have the EDS 30-day trial version, or you really need to start editing right away. They actually have an option when you purchase to be able to download the software, and then they will send you by email the key so that you can put it in, and you can start editing immediately without having to wait. So go visit the guys at videoguys.com. They'll take care of you. Videoguys.com is your source for streaming media and live production equipment, storage, and video editing hardware and software. We have specialized in video editing and production for more than 25 years, and our technicians are available to answer your questions and help you find the best solution for your needs and budget.